does a little speech before, and he's like, David Ross, he, you know, he may be, he may be retiring, but he'll never be forgotten. And one of those, I'm like, <laughs> you know, a little bit like, huh? What? What? Did anybody else hear that? I remember being in a room uh, with Riz and KB and them arguing about their war and because and, KB was getting moved around more, he, his, his was higher than Riz. <laughs> like, I'm like, what? Like, what do you, I don't even know. I, what, do I have a war? What's crazy being up here, like, what do you do with your hands when you're up there? <laughs> I was doing like this at one moment and I was like, I love you and I don't know who that was to. I was like, we're number one. <laughs> We don't mess around here, pal. Yeah, David right. Ross is here. Yeah. So what do we do? What are we talking about? Do we do the life and times? David oh, Ross, pal. No, 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 no. <laughs> David Ross, welcome to Baseball Stories. Thanks for having me, Jason. You know, it, it's great to have you here, man, because you're America's most beloved dancing, singing, <laughs> uh, commercial doing. ESPN broadcasting, book writing, backup catcher. What? I don't even, I don't even, I, there's not even, I don't know whose life I'm living. It's somebody, I'm, I'm living, I'm reincarnating uh, Bob Euchre is what we're doing. I'm going to run that, run that yeah, again. Let me, let me ask you about that, right? Like, you, you know, you played 15 years in the big leagues, but you bounced around, you're with seven teams. Now, all of a sudden, you're America's most beloved catcher. How did this happen? I mean, I, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I, I've got a couple people fooled. I, you know, I think it, it stems from things, great things have happened to me. Being on good teams is always nice in big markets, right? Like being in, in Boston and the whole bombing and winning the World Series in 13, and then in Chicago, breaking the curse and um, my teammates saying nice things about me. I think that's really where it starts because I really, <laughs> contrary to probably most people's belief, I don't like to toot my own horn. Like now I joke about it, but... Um, you know, my, my teammates said a lot of nice things about me in 15 and 16 and said what a big piece I was. And uh, Joe Madden said some things. And um, I think it's ex-teammates saying nice things about me. And then to the media, which in, then writes nice things to the fans. And, um, you know, you get to be loved. And, and I think people respect it if you go out there and play hard. And everybody cheers for the underdog and the old guy, right, the <laughs> grandpa. So a little bit of that. And then, you know, winning the World Series obviously puts you in history with, with Chicago and that great organization in that city. And then your teammates carrying you off the field, which is, for me, probably one of the coolest things ever happened to anybody in baseball. I don't know how it happened to me, but I, I look back on, like, cool retirement moments. And then you got David Ortiz and Derek Jeter and the, the walk-off hit and all these great things. And then, like, I, I feel like I can compete with that, getting carried off the field game seven. Um, which is cool for me and just my, the memories I have of my career. And like you said, I'm a, I'm a backup role player. I only started one year, over 100 games. And, you know, I just trying to, like anybody else, trying to find my way in baseball and, and make a living at it and enjoy it and have fun <laughs> and stick around. <laughs> Look at now, like, I don't even know what's going on in my yeah, life. Yeah, well, actually, we should probably uh, update people on what is going on. Your book, Teammate, being made into a movie, I got to know. Who's going to play you? I'm guessing Ryan Gosling? No. <laughs> I wish. I wish. No, uh, a guy by the name of uh, John Bernthal. Uh, he's uh, been in The Punisher. Um, he, it's in the making right now. They're filming in Australia. Um, they're supposed to start this month. So um, it's going to be it, – it's exciting. Like, I, I stay out of it as much as I can because I, I understand, like, my, my, my gig is baseball and, and – <laughs> like, if I start dipping my hand in the movie <laughs> business, I might be a little out of my league. So. Um, we, we talk probably once a month and bounce some ideas off each other. Or they'll send me some, a few things that they're thinking about. And uh, we had a big conference call uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, I was really surprised at how well the director, Shana Bess, knew me, knew not just the me that you see in front of the camera, but the me that my teammates know, the guy that can be a jerk and can be accountable and be, you know, like, you know, kind of call each other out. And he said some things about me. I'm like, how do you, how do you know that? You know, I was like, that's, that's a depth of me. I don't know if I want you to know. <laughs> right. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, I'm excited. Wow. It should be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty really cool. Fun. Right. I, just, I, I guess, to write, get that book by the rights and to make a movie. I was I actually scared me a little bit at first. I'm like, I don't know. God, I bet. Uh, right. Yeah. It's a little, it, a little crazy. It really is incredible to think about 
last year you made USA Today's list of 100 most powerful people in baseball. You were ahead of Billy Bean, Terry Francona, Giancarlo. How have you been wielding your power? Well, what, I've been, going? what I've been doing as I'm making this money on the side, I've been kicking it back to the media. <laughs> like, hey, can you, you, can must you, be. you must be. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeding them under the table. No, I, that's, that was one of the, my agent sent me that. I didn't even see it. My agent sent me that, and I couldn't. I just, I, it makes me laugh. Like, I'm, I, I, if people knew what an idiot I really am, they, they may not do that. But, you know, when you get put in that category, I think that's really cool and have an influence on young people and be young guys in the game. And I see how I go to these teams and other teams, and uh, especially last year, like Cole Calhoun and talking about watching dancing and his son um, sitting in front of TV and his wife. And he said, we, I we watched every episode and how his son, I, mean, I was his favorite player. And then, you know, other than his dad. And then Chris Sale came up to me in the All-Star game. He goes, buddy, my son made up uh, scorecards and would grade you every time. Like, <laughs> he had 10, 9, 8, he would, he would, like, score you every That's time. Surreal. Isn't that crazy, right? And I thought being, you know, old school, coming up, uh, you know, and back in uh, 2002, and kind of a little bit of the old school baseball and then transitioning to some of this younger generation, I thought, like, there may be some backlash, how are, how are the, the guys in Major League Baseball going to view me when I'm back, like, what are you doing, making an idiot of yourself kind of thing. And, you know, I was just kind of doing something fun. And I've got so much great feedback, and, and one of the best things I've done personally, um, just as far as getting outside your comfort zone and, and trying something new, but gotten so much great feedback from guys and, and uh, some ribbing from my from my ex-teammates in Chicago. But, no. Uh, but it's great. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's good. They said they're going to make me up a little tutu, uh, tutu jersey with a little little – yeah, and thing. I have no doubt they will. <laughs> you know, the other crazy thing about it is there really are not many baseball players where life begins at 35, 36 years old. But is that kind of an accurate description of what happened? With no doubt. Well, I, you know, people look back and things have really been great for me the last four or five years. But I like if you really look back, there were some some moments for me that were trying. And I, I wrote about it in my book, right, like some some a little bit of of learning who you are, how to fit in, um, just trying to find your way and the ups and downs of trying to make, make a major league career. And when you look back and you're, you're almost at 15 years in the big leagues and when it's all done, you're like, wait, how did how, I do that? <laughs> you know, a lot of smoke and mirrors, I tell people. But yeah, I mean, I went through, I got released um, in Cincinnati and went through a big learning experience under Dusty Baker and, and that group. And I had some success one year where I, I hit a bunch of home runs in a short amount of time. And, uh, was a starter and, and probably, probably one of the main guys and um, and then got humbled the next year, right? As soon as you think you're on top of the world, right. you know? So I have a lot of great experiences to pull from, not just good. There's a lot of bad before the good. And then getting to getting to Atlanta was a big one for me and learning from Bobby Cox and Brian McCann and Chipper Jones and um, Eric Hinsky, some of these all-time great teammates where I really had a transition in my life of like, okay, I'm gonna embrace this backup role and learn how to be a great teammate and play once a week uh, behind one of the best catchers of the time and Brian McCann. And so that was a good transition for me. I learned so much from Bobby Cox and that group there and then taking that to Boston and seeing that winning organization and how they prepared Dustin Pedroia, David Ortiz, Mike Napoli, Johnny Gomes. And so winning there in 13 and going along with the bombing and, and feeling connected with that city so fast was so big for me. And so you got a learning experience with a little bit of turmoil and I went through a big concussion some issues health wise and and then 14 was a terrible terrible year my I thought my career may be over in 14 um, I had a terrible year and we stunk in Boston and luckily uh, Johnny uh, Lester said hey why don't you come over here to Chicago <laughs> the, uh, how'd that work out that worked out pretty good <laughs> and things things were uh, uh, two 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 championships and some of the most iconic organizations right at the end of my career have kind of just catapult to me through the route, which is cool. Yeah, and uh, you know, all this stuff that's happened to you, uh, it's it's not just a tribute to David Ross, the baseball player, it's a tribute to David Ross, the human being. Thanks, and, and, I appreciate and, that. You're, I, not gonna I, make, you're not gonna make me cry on this show, this isn't one of those shows. We're not doing okay, that, right, we're gonna right, laugh, right, okay, okay, no good, crying. Good, good, good all right, <laughs> I'm such a crier, so. but thank you, thank you for saying that. And he does a little speech before, and he's like, David Ross, he, you know, he may be, he may be retiring, but he'll never be forgotten. And what are those? I'm like, you know, a little bit like, huh? What? What? Did anybody else hear that? I want to thank my family, my my wife Hyla, my kids, Landry Cole, Harper, my mom and dad. 
and this group right behind me. Thank you, guys. All right, David, let's look at some of the magical moments from your career. And let's start with a really big home run you once hit. Take a look. Oh, gosh. Let's see, who, who's, who's pitching there? It doesn't look like Johnson or Schilling, but it's Arizona. I tell people all the time, there's a famous left-hander that I was hoping would go into the Hall of Fame. Whenever they traded Johnson from Arizona. No, Mark Grace, what a cool spirit. He's screaming at me right there as I hit it. Come on, man, you're stealing my thunder. He was having a good night. He was laying that uh, he was laying that 70 mile an hour fastball in there. And a couple of the first guys, I'm like, I'm a rookie there. And I'm like, if he lays that in there to me, I'm swinging. And luckily I got some good wood on it. Tyler Houston right there behind me. I mean. Funny, he, he got a couple guys out really fast, but pretty cool story. Your first major league home run, and it's on Mark Grace. And I, I'm so thankful for that because I get more love from him when every time that we would come in there and he would be doing TV, he'd be like, David Ross, the uh, Dodgers' best hitter. <laughs> Dave Ross got his first big league hit, now homers off Grace. All right, now we've been showing all this frivolous stuff. Now we're going to get down to business. Game seven of the World Series. John Lester comes in, so you come in. Yeah. How'd that go? Well, it was awesome. I was so fired up to get in the game and knew I was coming in, and it didn't go, it didn't go great. <laughs> well, I just threw one in the crapper, right? <laughs> Kipnis had hit one here. I threw one in the crapper. They go to second and third. Two outs. I had just come in the game, and two runs score. Like, my worst nightmare is going on oh right now. Gosh. I'm supposed to be preventing. I try to block that ball. I trip over my own feet. Everybody thought I was concussed. <laughs> I trip over my own feet like the old guy I am. And then Kipnis hustling, scores from second. We had a four-run four lead. Now it's two. I just got in the game. I'm supposed to be run prevention. <laughs> Not going there, well. There I'm, I'm going, you got to be kidding there me There had right been now. a wild pitch in the World Series where two runs scored since 1911. Uh, so. Well, and I shouldn't have been on my watch. I'm so mad. Right. But and then I get to hit. Yeah. Try to regroup. I got in here. I wonder. I, I told myself I wasn't going to swing at the first pitch. He throws me a slider. I swing right through it. I'm like, <laughs> calm down. Then I take a slider right down the middle. It's Andrew Miller. And right before that, he threw me a fastball up and away I saw for a ball. And he, he threw, he shook, and I did some homework. He shook a lot to fastballs. So I just sold out to fastballs. I was in my two-strike approach. I touched it. Rajay, you see, he's going back. And I see him sizing it up. I'm like, if Rajay Davis catches this ball, I'm just going to run right out the tunnel <laughs> and right and keep going. He did going. not catch that ball. Wanted to give some love to my family, everybody in the stands, man. Just, what, I, I didn't even know. I hit that home run. Everybody's like, why don't you show more emotion? And I'm like, I just let in two. I got one back. I was happy, and I was like, I wanted to figure out who was coming up next. I knew we had a long way to go. It was still only the sixth inning. That, that's the last swing of your career. That's pretty cool. A game seven homer. No one else who ever played baseball could say that. That's, that's, that is, my teammates all fired up. It's a love <laughs> fest. Guys, it is. We, we're, everybody's jacked up. And oh, man, this is. It doesn't get any cooler than that. Look how excited. What I, I got pictures of this all over. Look at their faces. Look how excited they are for me. Like the smiles and Hensky and Arietta and Riz and hey, look at look at Zoe. Like everybody's so fired up for me. And wow. that, I mean, wow. <laughs> Jay, what's crazy being up here? Like, what do you do with your hands when you're out there? <laughs> I was doing like this at one moment, and I was like, I love you, and I don't know who that was to. I was like, we're number one. <laughs> like, you wave, you know? Like, what do you do? Like, you think about all these moments. Nobody pictures really getting carried off the field, game seven, all that, and there's not very many more cool moments than that. That was awesome. You know, I think we all would love to know what it's like to be in the dugout in the middle of an epic game seven, but you were mic'd that night. I can't get through my son. I'm trying my best. It's understandably so, buddy. I'm emotional. I hear you. I'm, I'm an emotional wreck. Oh, well, you're, it's only going to get worse. Just continue to breathe. That's all you can do, buddy. That's all you can do. It's only going to get worse. I'm glass case of emotions right now. Yeah, yeah. Wait till the ninth with this three run lead. <laughs> Great advice from the veteran guy. Just keep everybody. It's only going to get worse. <laughs> you're Way panicking to calm now. Down, yeah, baby. That's really good. calm down. Well, you saw Tommy, Tommy's face. Tommy was still there laughing. Yeah, Riz comes to me and, and, and you know, he's usually keeping things light in the, in the dugout. And, you know, I think that was part of his feelings. And I'm trying to be the veteran guy who is calm and I'm a mess inside <laughs> and trying to be that, that rock of, of like, nothing bothers me. But, um, yeah, I said it's only going to get worse because in my mind, I wanted everybody to keep playing the game, right? We had a lead, but it was, I'm like, wait, I just think this has got too many layers to it. I knew something was going to happen, right? And wait till the ninth inning. 
when it's we got a three run lead and, and you know we're trying to get three more outs, you're gonna be a really a mess. <laughs> you know, that's all you'll be able to think about. <laughs> well, one of those I'm like, <laughs> you know, a little bit like, huh? What? What? Did anybody else hear that? You know, like you're like looking around like, yeah, hey, you're any better side They're talking, yeah. Ross is Ross out? coming out? Is he going to get uh, Ross one more ovation? How wow. about that? Wow. How about that? A very classy move by Joe Madden to get David Ross one last ovation here in his final regular season home game. Do you think that there is a lesson for us all in how you came to have this career, this life? You know, I, it's funny. I get all this, like, how did you do it? And I'm like, man, it's not... It's not rocket science. It's work hard, treat people the right way. Like I, it's where I felt like I felt like I tried to put as much as I could into my baseball career, especially at the end, where I learned how to do that. Right? How to study, how to uh, be accountable to my teammates, how to check in with my teammates, put myself in their shoes. Sometimes a young guys, not just see it from my perspective, but try to see their side of the story. Um, and so interacting with people and trying to lift each other up so we all are successful because it's such a negative game and it's an, got a lot of negative in it. It's like the more we are around each other and can lift each other up, the better we're gonna be. It's so hard to play this game. If you, if, you wanna, if you wanna come down on somebody, you have to lift them up most of the time. So when you do come down on them, they know it's coming from a place of love and a place of like growth, rather than like the dude that always finds the negative. You know? So uh, I tell people the story all the time, like first, first inning or first at bat of an inning, guy hits a, a laser in the gap and the center fielder dives and catches it for a great play. Well, then your pitcher goes out and gives up five that inning and everybody comes off is all down. Well, don't forget the dude that made the great play, right? Like mm -hmm. high five him, hey man, great play that first out, whatever. And I think those things, knowing that you're watching and paying attention to everybody is, goes a long way when you need to come down on somebody like, hey, uh, you, you need to get down the line a little better or um, what kind of a bat was that? Or just, just you get, you get, you get a little more, uh, a little more, you get a little more collateral with the guys <laughs> when you when you want to come down on. The way you connected with people in Chicago, and it, I, I think like especially Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, the Brizzo Corp intern commercial. Right. Oh, that ball was Brizzo. Only one thing can get us where we need to be. <laughs> Interns. How would you describe? Your connection with those guys and what you think you did for those guys. I learned more about the younger generation and what these guys think about from hanging out with Addison Russell, Javi Baez, Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo. Just going to dinner with them about how they see the game, how they think, how they think about their brand, how they think about uh, their game and what they're trying to, to accomplish. And, and the stats they think about are so much different than what <laughs> we were talking about, right? Like, I remember being in a room uh, with Riz and KB and them arguing about their war and because and KB was getting moved around more, he, his, his was higher than Riz. <laughs> and like, I'm like, what? Like, what you, I don't even know. I, what, do I have a war? You know, what are those? So just, um, just fun stuff like that and being connected with them. And then a little bit of that, like, uh, Grandpa Rossi honesty that sometimes you got to give the young guys. Yeah. And um, I got one of the biggest compliments for me the other day. I walked into the locker room uh, in LA and uh, KB do dealing with a little shoulder issue. And uh, he goes, I was going to the trainer room. And all I thought about was you going, oh, my shoulder hurts. <laughs> cause I, cause I, he, got, he uh -oh. came out of a game one time cause he had a bad like, like stomach ache. And it was kind of like, you could tell it was bothering him. But I walked in, I was like, Oh, does your tummy hurt? Do I need to call your mommy? <laughs> like that, you know, just the old old guy, you know, give yeah. him a little bit. And um, and then last year I was done playing, but uh, I saw I looked, picked up the paper and I saw where he was a day to day with a sprained pinky. And I was I I called him. I'm like, hey man, don't let the trainer put pinky. <laughs> like, let him let him put finger. Let him put you know hand anything, but don't let him put pinky. Like I can't read the paper. Like oh my pinky. So you got nine other ones, you know what I mean? No other figures. Cut it off. Let's go. Chicago! Look what the boys got me! Well, you know, at the parade, one of the things that you did say, though, you held up that trophy, and you said, look what the boys yep. got me. And let me ask you, what about what that group did do for you? I mean, think about the last year of your career. <laughs> You won the World Series, you had that parade, you caught a no-hitter, you hit a home run in your last regular season at bat at Wrigley. Sunday night baseball, right? Like, yeah, crazy. Game, game seven home run, Saturday Night Live. 
Ellen, book, Dance with the Stars. I mean, Did, everything everything that I've had happen to me is, I, I think it was funny. I was just in LA and I thank those guys. Hey, hey boys, the, the wife and kid, thank you. You know what I mean? Like, you no guys kidding. have done more for me in my career, put more money in my pocket, lifted me up, um, on and on and on. All Everybody down from the trainers to the, the clubhouse guys, like, those guys put me on that pedestal and always and, and, and always said nice things about me. And that and I tell people that all the time, that's more of a character of that group than, than me. And it, I know it all comes back to me, but I've gotten more love because of those guys than I could ever repay them for. Uh, Chris Bryant and, and Anthony started the Grandpa Rossi thing. It's got half a million followers, and that stuff puts money in my pocket, and people love me for it, and they love my family for it. And um, it's, it's, it's done wonders. I mean, obviously, and you, you, we've talked about everything that I've done, but that group of guys have done so much for me. Not just the World Series, I'm, uh, you know, and in and, and, and all of my life, and I can't thank them enough. Everybody thinks I'm, I'm the next manager of this team or that team because I, I got to ride their coattails to the World Series, you know? I tell Johnny Lester and John Lackey all the time, I was like, thanks for letting me ride you guys' coattails to two championships, you know? Worked out well. Worked out well, that's right. Yeah. I'm along for the, the ride. Coolest thing that's happened to you since the World Series? Uh, the Saturday Night Live thing was fun. Yeah, yeah, fun. Uh, yeah, the Eddie Vedder in the in the in the Game Five was really cool. Well, you got to tell the story then. Okay, well, it, the Vedder <laughs> thing for me was was uh, on another level. So he gets ready to do the seventh inning stretch, and I'm sitting there, and Eddie Vedder does a little speech before, and he's like, and there's one guy in particular I want to sing my <laughs> for, and he's number three. He's behind the plate. He may retire, but he'll never quit. Mr. David Ross, I'd like to belt this one out for you. What are those? I'm like, you know, a little bit like, huh? What? What? Did anybody else hear that? You know, like you're like looking around, like, yeah, hey, you're Eddie Vedder's idol. Me. We're talking, yeah. So I must have thanked. I had text him after the game, like, man, you have. I don't even have the words, but thank you so much for that moment. That was really cool. We love you, Rossi. Let's take this show to Cleveland. I wouldn't change my my career, my experiences for anybody's, to be honest with you, but. Um, it would have been cool to be better, not drag my bat back to the dugout. <laughs> It'd be, be cool to hit more big home runs or something like that. But. Yeah, but all those guys who could hit were saying it would have been cool to be on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> no, no, they're not. They're not. No, I don't think they are. They don't even know I'm an idiot. But uh, that was that was that dancing stuff, man. I I tell people all the time that was so much fun. Talking about getting outside your box and and outside your comfort zone. I was so nervous. I get uh, the other question I always get all the time is, what was more nerve wracking, Game Seven? or Dance with the Stars. I'm like, Dance with the Stars times two. All right, well, D David, we call this show Baseball Stories. Your story is incredible. So thanks very Jason, much for thank joining us. thank you, man, always. Thank you, buddy.